memo, these excerpts that Fox News has exclusively um, obtained ahead of the release of this memo. And one of them has Christopher Steele, that British spy, uh, admitting to Bruce Orr, the employee at the DOJ that now has come down a couple rungs as they have punished him uh, mm -hmm. in some way for having maybe some undisclosed relationship with, uh, with possibly the, the company that put together that anti-Trump um, dossier because oh, his wife it's, worked there. It's not, it's not an undisclosed relationship. His wife, Nellie, worked for Fusion GPS sure. during that time. Uh, Steele admitted to Orr his feelings against candidate Trump in September of 2016. When Steele told Orr that he, Steele, was desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. Again, that's a quote from the memo from the excerpts that Fox News has uh, obtained exclusively. Your reporting on this. And, 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 and again, I mean, that this, this feeds into the whole narrative, which is the crux of this memo that it was spurious and specious information that led to the granting of those FISA warrants to begin with. You heard Catherine Herridge reporting a short time ago that Christopher Steele and Fusion GPS briefed some reporters on the contents of the dossier, what she referred to as circular reporting. Uh, mm -hmm. Sources in the intelligence uh, area have uh, said to me that what they did was they uh, I mean, they've been a, a little more uh, forthright about this, not forthright, but they've, they've been a little more strident about it, let's say, to say that what happened was that Christopher Steele ginned up a fake news story in order to sell the uh, credibility of that dossier, which was then taken by the FBI to the FISA court and used to obtain warrants for surveillance of Trump campaign officials. So, uh, you know, it's, it's being seen in very sharp terms here that, that it's being portrayed in this memo that this whole thing was ginned up as a way to get at the Trump campaign. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the strongest way to put it, what's coming out of the memo. Now, people can see it different ways. You know, obviously, Democrats are saying this was written by two Republicans. Of course, it's going to be bad. Uh, but we haven't even had a chance to read the full memo yet, nor, have the, nor has the American public. Uh, so we don't want to cast any, any uh, certainly any judgments on it. You don't want to do that as a journalist. But we, we can't go too far beyond what we're saying right now. But basically, I'm just being told that w what happened with this, uh, the, the FISA court and the application of the FISA court was based on false information and should never have happened. John so we'll Howard, see where it goes from here. John Howard Kurtz here. I mean, obviously, the import of this is that it raises questions about the roots of the Russia investigation, which the Trump administration has been trying Clearly. very hard to discredit. They have, the dossier was always considered... Uh, by mainstream media organizations, most of them, not including BuzzFeed, to be uncorroborated and unverified. But since there's been such a huge uh, partisan struggle over the release of this Devin Nunes memo, he, of course, the Republican chairman of the House Intel mm -hmm. Committee, uh, isn't there likely to be a pretty strong counterattack from Democrats whose own counter memo has not been able to be released, according to the committee vote, and they're going to say that this is uh, cherry-picking and that it uh, uh, has a lot of omissions in it? The, the reason well, the Democratic memo hasn't been released because the Democrats have not asked for the memo to be released. It didn't go through the same process that the Republican memo did. Uh, you know, it's got to go through a vetting process. It's got to go through a vote process. It's got to come here to the White House because it contains classified information. You know, it was, it was asked at a breakfast with the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, on Tuesday morning. Well, why don't you just release the Democratic memo at the same time? And Speaker Ryan made all those points that you want to... You want this memo without it going through the same process that everybody demanded of the Republican memo, that just wouldn't be protocol. So if, if the Democrats want that memo out, it's a very simple process to go through, Howie, and, and they could go through exactly the same thing that Nunes and Gowdy did to get their memo out. But certainly, you're going to hear a lot from Democrats that this thing shouldn't have come out, that it's a crime against the FBI. It's, it's, it's in violation of uh, national security and, right. and intelligence protection protocols. But we've heard all that already. So sure. all we need to, what, what we're try, hoping to do right now in the immediate is to read this darn thing. Uh, John, real quickly, and, and we're going to kind of talk between you and Catherine, but before you go for right now, what do we know about this Democratic memo? Do we know the length of it or anything? I, I know nothing about That's it. That's a good I'm question. Sorry. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, John, we'll come back.
Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, now, let's go back to Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge. So you heard me reading that excerpt, Catherine, and, and I hope I didn't force you to put your cup of coffee down because uh, it's your work and your writing. But John and I were just talking about it, John Roberts, uh, about Steele admitting to that DOJ employee, Bruce Orr, that he had some pretty strong feelings about candidate Trump becoming president. So the two key players uh, that really matter to this part of the memo, there's this former British spy, Christopher Steele. He was the one who was tasked to gather the research for the Trump dossier. And then this Justice Department official, Bruce Orr. And based on our reporting, at a certain point, the FBI cut off their contact with Christopher Steele. And after that, Steele continued to provide information to the FBI through an indirect channel, which was Bruce Orr. And we've got a quote from the four-page memo that has just been declassified. And what it states, Steele admitted to Orr his feelings against then-candidate Trump in September of 2016, when Steele told Orr that he, Steele, was desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. Uh, president. So that information goes to the idea that Steele had a political agenda when he was gathering this information for Fusion GPS and they were being bankrolled by the DNC and the Clinton campaign. And if I could, I do know a little bit about the Democrats' version of the memo. I know oh, you were just asking yes. John about yeah. that. So the Democrats' version uh, is 10 pages, um, and their argument all along has been that the Republican drafted memo is, is inaccurate because key facts are left out. So what I anticipate in the Democrats' memo is that it's more fulsome, perhaps in its reporting, to make the argument that the Republican version, which is a, you know, about half the length, um, is, uh, is not a full picture of what actually happened. And if I could just make one final point, you know, most Americans aren't familiar with this FISA court. This is a national security court. It's the most secret court in the entire United States. And I would argue it's really it's sort of on a plane with the Supreme Court because yes. these justices have mm -hmm. to make decisions about whether the U.S. government is allowed to surveil Americans inside the United States. And some of my contacts who've had cases where there are surveillance warrants uh, with their clients tell me that the threshold in these courts to sign off on the surveillance of an American inside this country is like this. It's extremely high. And even before we learned information today about the dossier, they said to me, if opposition research was used in any way to obtain a surveillance warrant from this court and the court did not know who was bankrolling that information because that goes to the credibility and mm -hmm. they didn't know it was also being shared with the memo that goes to the credibility then whoever put in that application has a really big problem because this is not the standard that the FISA court operates at. Hi Catherine it's mm -hmm. Lisa Booth uh, so as we're learning more about uh, the way the FISA warrant was obtained, also the briefing of reporters, how central in your estimation is the dossier in the entirety of the Russia investigation itself? I think uh, I want to kind of uh, reserve my thoughts on that until I've read the entire the entire memo. But based on the information we've been able to learn so far, it, it played a role in part in obtaining a warrant and that uh, then FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe testified behind closed doors to the House Intelligence Committee that if they didn't have the dossier, they would not have been able to secure at least one warrant. I don't know if it applies uh, in other situations. And what also has my attention is that in the fall of 2016, Fusion GPS and Christopher Steele were busy briefing major American media organizations about the dossier. The vast majority did not run with it. But some reports were made, but it's, it was an effort to sort of seed a storyline, if you will, right? right. <laughs> At right. the same time that the information provided um, to the FBI. And um, I was reporting last hour, people on the committee tell me that the FBI and Justice Department say they knew the dossier was funded by the DNC and Clinton campaign, but they can't say exactly when they knew that. And that's extremely important because if they knew this before the application for a surveillance warrant to this national security court, 
then whose decision was it to withhold that information or not give the National Security Court the full picture before they made that kind of awesome decision to grant surveillance on American citizen inside of this country? Catherine, this is Melissa. Let mm -hmm. me ask you, um, you know, you made the distinction mm -hmm. that they this was used to gain at least one FISA warrant. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know how many there were in total? And are, are the Democrats going to then come back and mm -hmm. say, well, it was only that one. They wouldn't have got it without it. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get that much from that one warrant, but they got all these other warrants based mm -hmm. on good information. So who cares? That's a great line of questioning, and I just don't have a good answer to that yet, so I'd rather not uh, speculate. I'd rather see okay. if the memo speaks of, of one or more uh, surveillance warrants and then whatever the, what the rebuttal is um, from the Democrats, because right now we seem to have one side of the story, right, what's in the Republican drafted memo, um, but we need to see how Democrats respond and how they make the argument that the memo is misleading because certain information is absent. Uh, Catherine, it's, it's mm -hmm. Harris back again. You know, I was taking notes on what you said about the Democrat memo kind of being the mm -hmm. answer back to criticism that some, in their estimation, mm -hmm. Democrats, key facts were left out in the Republican mm -hmm. memo. So I'm curious because a lot of our reporting has pointed to the fact that Democrats were taking exception to the original GOP memo not being full enough, not having enough mm -hmm. in it, um, but they wanted redactions. They wanted things taken out. Uh, can, mm -hmm. can you talk to me about what the redactive process has been for this GOP memo uh, per what we've been able to learn? Well, Harris, this is a process. Um, we've never really been down this road before, and so it's been difficult for all parties involved to navigate, not only on Capitol Hill, but also for reporters, because no one can really point to any particular precedent. Under these House rules, uh, the uh, Intelligence Committee um, voted, and with a majority vote, they were able to make this memo that they had drafted available to everyone uh, in the House. The Democrats uh, came up with their own version, which they wanted to make available to everyone in the House. But according to these long-standing rules, they would need a majority to do that, and they are in the minority on the committee, so they were not able to move forward. Okay, uh, Our reporting is that the Democrats did ask um, for an edit, as did uh, the FBI, or a redaction. But everything that we understand is that it was relatively minor. And, and the reason that is, is based on our reporting, this, this memo was drafted in a way with the anticipation that it would ultimately be made public, right? So it was very um, deliberate in, in its efforts to not discuss sources and methods. Uh, oh, interesting. And, yeah. Right, okay, so yeah, it, I it, it, it was designed to, to be public with the idea that it would not be revealing uh, sensitive information. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and Catherine, in just the last few seconds, mm -hmm. we have learned that the memo is fully out. Oh, and good. I, I, I know that you <laughs> had. Yes. <laughs> now you can probably share with us uh, everything else that you've got. I see you, you motioning over. Maybe right they're going to hand it to you right yeah, now. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Do you have it right now? Catherine, right. let's. Yeah. Okay. okay, she's going to take a quick uh, peek. Yeah. Yep. We're going to keep you on right screen, now. but we're going to okay. talk amongst right. ourselves. So, Howard Kurtz, you had some interesting questions because you said certain things will happen with when this memo comes out. What? Well, uh, yeah. obviously, there'll be a Democratic counterattack, which will say this is not the whole picture. But here's how it's changed our understanding. So, we can now see that not. Not only this hoppo Hold on a second. Let's cut Catherine's mic, mic so she Catherine's can have doing a some private work. conversation. We're seeing real reporting right, in action. Okay, we, <laughs> we can now <laughs> say reporting being done right here. that the roots of the Russian investigation, as, as reflected in this FISA warrant, were one with oppo research from Fusion GPS hired by the Democrats, and two, Christopher Steele, not just an ex-British spy, but a guy who we now know was desperate in his words to stop of Donald Trump. At the same time, I just want to point out the Robert Mueller investigation has seemingly, from the reporting we have, moved a bit away from the whole Russian collusion question to questions of obstruction of justice. So even if everything in this Devin Nunes memo is true, it does undercut what Mueller is doing right That's now. interesting. Okay, so for people who are just joining us and they have heard us for days talking about the White House having five business days up until what would have been on Monday, 
to uh, declassify the contents of a House intelligence memo and the potential release of that. That memo, just seconds ago, has been released and it is made public. Our uh, lead intelligence correspondent on the job on this is Catherine Herod. She is now, you saw her on the phone moments ago. She was talking already. We cut her mic. She's working on getting through. Now, remember, it's, it's less than four pages. So she's working on going through and making her notes that she had made by the Fox News exclusive excerpts that we had in the last hour uh, side by side with the full release of the memo. Uh, we've talked a lot about the Democratic response. We have a Democrat on the couch. Let's get some. Jessica? Well, I haven't read the memo. I have it in my email, but I haven't gone through it. Um, like Howie was saying and like Catherine was saying as well, there will be a Democrat response. Their memo is uh, more than double the length of Devin Nunez's memo, so there's going to be a lot more in there, obviously. I'd love to hear why they wanted names redacted, um, what exactly the omissions were. And I'm also curious to see if the FBI will release their own document because they objected to the release of this in the first place, and they said that it would be extremely damaging. Uh, so there has been speculation that perhaps Christopher Wray will release a statement on his own, clarifying what's gone on here. But I think everyone will be watching Rod Rosenstein now because that is said to be Trump's target because he wants him removed because uh, he's the only one who can fire Bob Mueller. Uh, so those are the moving pieces here. OK, but if you're President Trump, you have every right to be deeply concerned about all of this. You sure. essentially have a Democrat opposition research piece at the heart of the Russia investigation, as well as likely the public narrative well, shaped around that. Meanwhile, you also have the Obama administration unmasking his team's name, making for the intelligence community to, to share information across uh, agencies. So, of course, President Trump is deeply concerned. I and then he's told by James Comey three separate times he's not under investigation. As Howie said, now it looks like it's the obstruction of ju uh, justice aspect that Robert Mueller's looking and at. And also the money and laundering. Comey that. He forced... He forced a special counsel investigation after he was fired. So if you're President Trump, how do you not collectively look at all of those things I, and say, what in the heck is going on here? I, I have never said that President Trump doesn't have a reason to be concerned and that we shouldn't be looking into all of these moving pieces. But we keep ignoring the fact that... Uh, Carter page who was the person that was being surveilled they're making the argument oh, that the Pfizer warrant was suspended it started in 2013 this I, didn't start when president Jessica, trump I was going to step in yeah. here because uh, i'm sure you can open the memo on your mm -hmm. phone by now yeah uh, dear mr chairman so I, i'm going to read a, a little bit of this the white house uh the honorable devin nunez this was the the white house memo Dear Mr. Chairman, on January 29th, 2018, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence uh, voted to disclose publicly a memorandum, uh, and it just talks a little bit about that. The president understands that the protection of our national security represents his highest obligation. Accordingly, he has directed lawyers and national security staff to uh, assess this, and now it is out. So we are all clicking on this um, very popular PDF right now, trying to get it open. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to kind of get in there and get some of the language that they would have heard from the White House. Go ahead, Jessica. Oh, uh, I'll finish. So <laughs> Carter Page, um was on their radar from 2013. He didn't work for pre now President Trump in 2013. So this started well before that. And we know that what kind of characters Carter Page were, just like Paul Manafort and Rick Gates and the like. So I have never said that President Trump doesn't have a reason to be concerned. I have never said that any of this is rooted in invalid questions. What I am saying is that there appears to be movement on the part of the GOP, the Republicans, who have always billed themselves as the top defenders of law enforcement. to undermine the FBI and the DOJ because of the Bob Mueller special counsel investigation. But you're forgetting the fact that Congress is also an investigative body mm -hmm. and they have oversight authority okay. here. And if you have people at the FBI or the DOJ abusing their authority, particularly for political partisan reasons, mm -hmm. that should be deeply concerning yeah. to you. Of course it is. As well as every American okay. who is watching this show right now. And it now. happens All on right, both sides. We're going to step in again. Melissa, do you want to tag team this? I'm going to go ahead. We've got the yeah. unclassified memo now. Uh, and this is to majority members of the House Intel. So Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act abuses at the Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation is the subject matter of the memo. The purpose. This memorandum provides members an update on significant facts relating to the committee's ongoing investigation into okay. the Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation and uh, their use of Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, FISA, during the 2016 presidential election. You want to go ahead and jump to I the... Think 
investigation. what we're going to do is we're going to go to Catherine Herridge. Is that right? That That's what they just told me. We don't, do we want to bring Catherine back in or you want us to yep, do more of this? Good. There okay, we go. go ahead, Catherine. Okay, so I'm through the first couple of pages of the memo, and uh, what they indicate is that the focus is on the FISA application for Carter Page. Carter Page was a one time foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign, and it states that then FBI Director James Comey signed three. FISA applica applications, pardon me, on behalf of the FBI, as well as Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, who uh, was removed earlier this week, uh, Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates. She's the one who uh, sort of famously sounded the alarm about Mike Flynn, uh, and she felt there was a basis for him to be blackmailed by the Russians, as well as then Acting Deputy Attorney General Dana Buente and uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. The key finding here, it says, our finding.